The past week has highlighted two pain points for global markets – the presidential elections in the United States and the situation with the leading party in France's future parliament. Considering that the debate between Donald Trump and Joe Biden made a depressing impression on supporters of the current US president, the negativity on American stock exchanges intensified. By Friday evening, the mass media was flooded by publication on the issue that Joe Biden lost this uh, uh, rivalry. Most of the articles uh, revealed a panic mode. Indeed, from the point of view of the largest institutional investors, Trump's return to the White House is regarded as a real disaster. Therefore, the main stock index S&P 500 went into decline and started the new week in the red, trading in the trading calendar between 5,451 and 5,524 points. The US dollar also found itself in a difficult position because inflation slowed down in the United States. As the May reports showed, the annual inflation rate in the American economy is from a 2.8% to 2.6%, and this cemented expectations regarding the timing of a US rate cut later this year. In addition, the US growth pushed the US dollar down against a basket of major currencies. On a late Friday, the US dollar also began to lose steam. The greenback carried on with its slide in the early Asian session today. The US dollar index began the first week of July falling within the intraday Canada of 105.40 to 105.70. Meanwhile, United Europe is trying to digest the results of yesterday's vote in France. Analysts are speculating on how this adventure of Emmanuel Macron could end. According to interim results, the far-right nationalist of the National Rally Party are leading in the first round of parliamentary elections with 33% of the votes. The far left received about 28% and the presidential coalition together. It is uh, way behind with uh, 22% of votes. The results differ somewhat among different French media, but the numbers roughly enable the same conclusion. It's also known that the center and the left parties are negotiating to keep out the majority of the far right, and this campaign will end on a July 7, and no one can predict its outcome now. However, the euro is still celebrating its small victory that the single European currency has grown, but in fact it has only shifted to the upper border of a narrow trading range. But our analysts do not rule out that the euro might lose ground today. In other words, the euro could retrace to the lower border of the range. The fact is that last week several ECB policymakers announced the scenario of two more interest rate cuts before the end of this year. Apparently, this comments prefaced Christine Lagarde's speech today. If the ECB president somehow confirms these statements, then the single European currency will inevitably go down. But the euro will hardly go beyond the corridor established today. Investors do not intend to take many risks ahead of the publication of reports on the US labor market. The government data, namely the non farm payrolls, will be released only on a Friday. Meanwhile, the euro dollar pair managed to exit the sideways channel between 1.0670 and 1.0750 for the first time in two weeks. As a result of breaking the upper border of the flat corridor, traders added more long positions, so the euro buyers have become more active. In this situation, if the instrument settles above the sideways channel during the day, it could indicate a further increase in the euro against the green bag, at least to the round level of 1.0800. In this case, it will be clear if the euro began its recovery after a long correctional move. However, there is a uh, suspicion that this bullish breakout of the upper border was false.
Then, as a result, the euro-dollar pair should return to its previous trading range, which today is between the support area of 1.0716 and the resistance of 1.0779. The oil market has been stuck in the same range for almost two weeks now. Only the US labor market data can set the market in motion. The first report on this topic will be available tomorrow. However, the report on the US vacancies is unlikely to change market sentiment. The Jolty's job openings report are published with a month's delay. That's the report will indicate the data for April, not May. Analysts expect contraction to 7.9 million. Therefore, our analysts project that until the end of the week, the market will trade within the same range at of 85 to 86 dollars per barrel. As you can see, nothing radical has happened on the chart over the past seven trading days. However, although the brand price has been trapped at the same level, it's still a zone of a local peak of the bullish cycle. So the fact that the price is at the elevated levels indicates that the bulls are still setting the tone. Otherwise, the current overheating of long positions could lead to a downward retracement. Another bullish factor for Earl can be considered an increase in the business activity in China's manufacturing sector. The corresponding PMI surpassed the forecast and looked an improvement in the economic situation in the world's largest oil consumer, China. According to a report from the private company Taishin, the manufacturing PMI rose to 51.8 points and thus recorded the strongest rise in the second sector um, in the sector since May 2021. You have watched the review of the global financial markets for today, July 1st. Keep close tabs on the global markets on the Insta Traders TV channel. Feel free to leave your comments. Our experts are always ready to answer all your questions. Thank you for watching and see you online tomorrow.